Welcome back to uh, part three of our Mark III Scarab Recon build. Um, just to recap what I've done so far, I've made up my four booms with motors. I've done the Z bend in the wire in the middle, so I've only got just short leads hanging out. I've done four of those, just because it's something I like to do on two of them. I've put some white heat shrink just to help visualize the front arms of the, the airframe. Then I've gone through and I've done my three pins for each one of the boom mounts and three pins for uh, the uh, camera mount uh, block. And I've also used three pins and three screws through both layers of carbon to attach the extended tail section to the main frame. Okay. Um, now I mentioned before the fact that I've, I've said a couple of times I've only done three holes, three pins, because the fourth pin is an oversized hole. I've just confirmed with uh, Multi-Wee Copter, and that was a deliberate thing. Uh, they started to do an oversized hole in one corner on the top plate. So, yeah, and the idea was that uh, you left, you could leave one screw in one pin with the boom sitting in its mounting block and it wouldn't fall out on you every time you took the top plate on and off, it would hold it all together. Which is great and fine if you only ever wanted to take the top plate off, but sometimes you want to take the bottom plate off. And that meant that you had to do undo all four screws on each block to take it off, which meant the whole idea of the clearance hole disappeared. So now we have matching clearance holes in the top and the bottom. So what I have done is I've taken five of the pins and I have loctited and screwed a screw all the way into it. And that now becomes a slide-in locking pin that goes into that fourth hole. Okay, so I've prepared previously five of these ready for this next step. All right, because now what we're going to do is start to sort of put this together. We're going to add our booms to the airframe, and then we're going to uh, start to mount some electronics into the bottom half. Okay, so I'm going to go through all that step now. So first thing I'm going to do is grab one of my booms. This one doesn't have heat shrink on it, so it's going to be a rear. Now I'm going to want to just slide this pin that I've prepared up through the bottom of the base. And I actually use the cardboard box that the Paris board comes in in the kit to actually just hold this section up while I'm working on it. Um, you may find something else mildly more convenient. Now, having popped the block mount block over the top of all that, what I can do is I can take one of the short screws that's supplied in this other set. and pop it through what will be the clearance hole into the top of that added pin. Oops, pin's fallen out a little. There we go. And that now holds that boom in place. So that's not going anywhere. Okay, once the top plate goes on, we'll then do the other three screws. All right, and we still have access to this fourth screw, but um, in the meantime, nothing's going anywhere. That lock has that pin in it. Now that whole block will actually still come off the airframe if I want to slide it off the other three pins. Won't be an easy thing to do, but uh, it ain't going anywhere. All right, so go to repeat that for the other arms. Now in theory, at this point in time, you would also fit um, the boom section for the uh, camera mount, but I'm gonna leave that off for now, just cause it's one less thing to get in my way. So 
So, there's my removable pin, that's the removable one. Boom sits on, block over the top, and with my short screw into looking at it from this way I'm looking at it, it's the inside right screw. Doesn't matter, it's still the pin that's got the clearance hole that screw goes into. Now, here's a tip for you. If you have a look here, I've done it so that the boom lines up pretty much, it's only just clearing the boom block. Here you can see there's a lot more boom sticking through. Okay, so what I want to do is try and actually match these up so they're all the same. I made the amount of boom sticking through the mounts at the end all the same, and I want to make all the insides of these booms mounting up the same because that just balances it better. The booms are all the right, all the same length, it will help it fly better. And you can confirm it, the length if you want, by measuring from the inside of the motor mount to the boom, but I find um, that just making sure that there's just that little lip sticking through um, and getting these ends right you don't have to worry about measuring the centerpiece. It's actually not that critical a dimension but um, I just find yeah I'm just a bit fussy when it comes to these sorts of things and I know balance is crucial to flight performance so this is just one of those other things you can do to to help the, the mechanical balance of it of the airframe rather than just have to deal with it from some sort of trimming method. So I've put my third pin through it, my fourth pin straight through. Boom in place. Walk over the top. It's a bit of a juggling act doing it this way with that pin sort of floating, but I can see the advantage of doing it. Okay, just a little bit of a lip. Grab a short screw. Now one thing you may notice is I'm not actually using any Loctite on these screws. One of the recommendations from Multi-Wee Copter is, is, that, is to not do Loctite on the top plate screws. Uh, for my own builds, I do use Loctite on these screws. I just, I'm a big fan of you know, metal. If it's a metal screw and it's something metal, it should have Loctite on it. Um, but there is a bit of, it's actually a good idea to, to actually leave that off. It's, um, uh, to not lock tight these. Uh, it does make getting the top plate off for servicing a lot easier. But with the new, um, top plates that don't have a centerpiece, it actually isn't that big a deal. I find I can actually do a lot of work on the airframe repair wise or maintenance wise or all, any of those sorts of things I find I can do that just as easily now um, uh, without having to pull the top plate off I'm just not needing to pull the top plate off as much as I once did I can change an ESC I can rewire a motor I can do all that sort of stuff with the top plate still attached because we've now got this large open section which will which you'll see more detail of later okay yeah that is a bit of a juggling act to do that but all worthwhile all right that's ready to go I'll just come back in a second we'll start on the electronic Okay, just for the sake of neatness, I'm actually just going to sit that block in place for the moment. Um, it'll need to go on before the top plate goes on, but I'm not going to put that pin through. I'm not going to put the bolt in it, because I can do that later when I actually fit the camera mount. Okay, so, next thing we need to do is fit the ESCs. And this is a new feature of the Mark III board. It actually has specific outdoor outboard areas for the ESC to sit in. So basically we've got a spot there and there for the front ones and we've got a spot here and another spot over here for the rearward ones. So they get so the ESCs are out in, in a bit of air. They're a, 
they've actually got an outrider section effectively in these two spots here to sit in and stay cool. Now the instructions say to use uh, a cable tie to hold them in place. And you can see there actually is a beautiful pair of screws, screw holes there, either side of it, a, um, clearance holes for it to cable tie onto, but I prefer to use myself double sided tape to hold them in place. So that's what I'm going to do here, but um, yeah, the instructions say use cable ties, it's up to you which way you go. I just like using double sided tape. Um, instructions say a cable tie, it's totally up to you which way you go. I know some people who do both. Bit of double sided tape on the ESC and then a cable tie around it as well. Alright, so I'm just going to pop all four of these quickly into place. They're not a difficult build the scarabs, but they're a bit on the repetitive side. So if you're doing a lot of them, that's great because you know exactly what the next step is and you sort of get into a rhythm with building them. Um, but from an entertainment point of view of you guys watching me do this, it is a bit tedious at times. But anyway, as you can see I'm actually doing the motor, mount, motor wires to the outside. And which means I've got the power wires coming into the center and the control wires coming into the center, the servo leads coming into the center. Because I've got enough length on these on these motor wires to come back and plug into the leads coming out of the arms. Okay, so it just, whereas if you did it the other way around, you're just not going to have enough length on those power plugs to actually get um, that all plugged in. Okay, and they are the ESCs in place. One, two, three, four. Now, okay, just going to try and make this a little. I tend to try and neat and keep the wires as neat as possible as I'm doing the build. Now, uh, just a note. Uh, um, I'm just going to show you, pop the top plate on for a second as far as a bit of electronic placement. For those of you who are going to run an, a Paris board, it will actually, I'm going to do it on this kit, so it actually mounts, I'm going to do a, a new idea that, uh, that Quentin's come up with, where we actually, instead of screwing this plate directly onto the top of the frame, he actually mounts the, this the removable plate up high and has the electronics sitting under it. So this actually becomes a protective top plate rather than just uh, an additional mounting plate. Uh, now, so I'm gonna be mounting the Andromeda and uh, the Paris boards on this, I'll get to that later, and actually sit them up high there on spaces. But if you're gonna run a NASA on this, there's plenty of room to get it inside here. That's the ideal spot for it, okay? And you can see just with the top plate sitting there how much access I have to all the wiring. I can actually swap motor wires around. I can get at the power loom. I can actually do quite a lot of work on the, on the aircraft through that access hatch. It's quite roomy. All right. So the next thing I want to do is um, take my motor wires and plug them into the motors, into the ESC. Right, one, two, and three. You just want to get them plugged in at the moment. Next, the next step I'm going to do is actually do all the setup of the ESCs before I put the lid on. <coughs> 